Okay, so uh, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to a very, very special Wake Up webinar where we will be talking all about spaces. So I know that many of you uh, joined us for the live launch of spaces last week. It was so much fun. We had so much fun putting it together and we hope that you had a great time joining us as well. We know that Marcus had a great time. Um, but the new school year is upon us and uh, many of you will be returning to the classroom this year. Many of you will be teaching remotely and some of you will be doing a little bit of uh, both, uh, blended learning. Either way, uh, we've got you covered at Wakelet. You've got our full support. We're here for you uh, along this journey to try and make things a little bit easier. And in this webinar, we'll be showing you how to use our brand new feature uh, spaces, uh, along with some great ideas that you can start implementing into your classrooms uh, this new school year. So we're joined today by two of my favorite people in the whole wide world who also happen to be my best friends. They don't know it, but they are my best friends. We have the courageous, creative, and confident Callum from Wake Up With Us. Say hey, Callum. Hey, everybody. And uh, Callum is gonna be showing you all how Spaces works. Um, Callum is our product uh, guy, that he leads products. So he's, Spaces has been his baby. He's seen it go from just an idea to an actual uh, feature. So he's in a really good place to show everybody around. He's gonna be showing you how to use it, how to create a space, how to invite people, and so on and so forth. And we also have the honor of being joined by the magic maker himself, Mr. James Davis. Say hey, James. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. James will be taking some of your questions and popping in and out of the webinar to make some awesome contributions along the way as well. And uh, once Callum finishes talking about spaces, I'll be sharing some really cool ideas that uh, educators just like you have shared with us over the last few days. And uh, we've made spaces and Wakelet easy enough for you to start doing these tomorrow if you really wanted to. But uh, without further ado, um, I'll, what have I forgotten? That's it. This webinar will be recorded. So we will be putting it out on YouTube. We will be sharing it with you all afterwards. And as I mentioned before, everybody will receive a certificate of attendance as well. Now, those of you who missed it, um, we want this webinar to be very uh, social, right? So have a good time, have some fun, share some really cool ideas in the chat. Let us know how you'll be using spaces. If you've already used spaces, let us know how you have used spaces. Um, and just let's just have some fun. Uh, Callum, over to you uh, to, to give everybody an introduction to Wake Up Spaces. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, I have to live up to expectation now with uh, the big reveal of spaces from last week. Uh, but just again, just echoing what everybody said, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we will try and answer as many questions that come through the chat as possible. Uh, so I'll run through this quite slowly, just so everybody can, can sort of follow along. Uh, and it might be just a good idea just to maybe even follow along with me with, uh, on your own screen. So I'm going to show you how to sort of create your first space, how you can organize your profile a little bit better, and also some of the collaborative elements of, of spaces a little further down the line. Uh, but just uh, first of all, I know some people in the, uh, in the webinar might not, have, might not be too familiar with how Wakelet works. So I'll just give a quick overview uh, for those of you that are joining that are not too uh, sure on how, how Wakelet works uh, from that, the basic level. Um, so Wakelet is just a creation platform uh, that allows you to save and organize content from around the web into collections uh, that are really, really visual. Uh, that you can share with your students, colleagues, friends, families, whoever that might be. Uh, so just quickly, I'm just going to show you one collection that I've made here uh, on improving my fitness. So I've just made a collection here and I can, as you can see here, I have uh, some notes about being healthy and why it's important, uh, some articles, blog posts, um, images, uh, and so on. Uh, so I just thought I'd just show you this example of a collection just so you can see what Wakelet, how Wakelet works in case you've not uh, created your first collection yet. Um, but for those of you that have used Wakelet before, I'm sure you'll be very familiar with your home area and what you can see here. Uh, so I've just created this uh, profile really, really quickly just to show you how I maybe have, how some people might have their, um, their profiles looking and how you can actually organize your collection a little bit better, uh, your profile a little bit better with spaces. Um, so one of the reasons why we actually built spaces was to just to add that extra organization because we know many of you might be using many different hats uh, as, a, as an educator. You might be using Wakelet personally, uh, professionally, maybe creating a portfolio of all the, the great things that you do, uh, creating collections of things that you share with your students' families, and then also maybe even stuff that you share with your students on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Uh, and the problem that we've, we've seen with Wakelet recently was that once you've been using Wakelet for a little while, you would end up with a profile looking a little bit like what you can see here. So I have some collections for tweets that I could, I would like to organize in a, in a Twitter collection or a, a Twitter area. I have personal collections such as like healthy cooking, uh, improving my fitness, uh, gym workouts, uh, and so on. And I also have actually some weight clip resources that I have. So I have uh, a cool collection called Explain Weight Clip in a GIF, where I have all these little cool uh, GIFs that are uh, quite funny that show how some people have explained weight clip using, using a GIF. I have some weight clip PD um, and so on. So as you can see here, lots of things are jumbled up. Uh, and that's sort of one of the main reasons that we actually built Spaces. Um, so Spaces just essentially allows you to create pretty much another profile or another space under your uh, sort of under the same email address that you have. So as you can see here, I've just got uh, Calumet Wakelet. I have my profile here, but if I wanted to actually create a new space, all I would need to do is just click the plus button to the left hand side of uh, your profile. Hopefully everybody can see that on, on, on the screen. Um, but if I had to click this plus button, I have not used spaces here on this account before. So just give me a little bit of an intro to what Spaces is, and it might be just good just to have a, have a read of that just so you can understand Spaces if you've not used it yourself. But hopefully uh, after this session, I'll have done a good enough job where you all understand uh, what Spaces is and how you might be able to use it. Uh, but if I just hit let's go, it'll take me to the screen where I actually just set up my first space. Uh, and as we said during a wake live, if you was there, a space can be a space for anything. So personal, it can be uh, topical, so it could be on math resources, it could be on science resources, it could be on pretty much anything. Uh, but because, uh, as you saw on my profile a moment ago, I had some personal collections that I want to actually organize. So I'm going to just make a personal space. Uh, I'm just going to click create. So now, very, very simply, I've just created my first space there. Uh, and it looks pretty, pretty much the same as a profile. So as you can see, it's very, very similar. Uh, and there are a few little intricacies that are slightly different and I'll run through that as we go through this webinar. Uh, but as you can see here, I have my collections and I actually wanna move some of my personal collections from my profile into my space. So as you can see here, I have healthy cooking. If I wanted to move this collection, all I need to do is hit the three dots here and hit move collection. And because I have now created that space, I can just select that space as somewhere that I want to move that collection to. Uh, so as you can see, that's just moved straight away. So I'm just gonna really, really quickly move some of my uh, personal collections into that personal space. I'm gonna move this collection to my personal space. I'm going to move um, my gym workouts. I mean, I, I, I have a gym collection, but like many of us, we, we have all the good intentions of going to the gym, but we don't actually end up going ourselves. But Okay, I was going to actually, I was going to actually ask you, Callum, when I saw the gym collection, I was like, when was the last time that you, you used that? <laughs> <laughs> a good while back. <laughs> uh, definitely um, before the pandemic anyway, um, hit. So at least, at least six months, <laughs> uh, but it's at least a good reminder for me to go back to the gym uh, once things hopefully go back to normal a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I've just moved a few things to my personal account. And I have a few uh, Twitter collections that I would like to, to categorize as well. So I'm actually going to go um, Twitter resources. So this might be when you find some resources that you've seen really cool ideas from Twitter that you've created collections on, maybe created Twitter charts or anything like that. I'm going to actually move these collections into that section as well. So um, did I create one? Oh, I'm going to bear with me a second. I'm not sure, quite sure what I did there. Looks like the internet may have dropped on your side, a little bit unstable maybe. Yeah, it looks like it. Bear with me a second. Hopefully this refresh will help, will work. Yeah, there we go, I think that's, that's fine. Okay. Bear with me a second. <laughs> uh, 21st century problems, isn't it, these days? <laughs> I just love it when this happens. I just watch your face. I'm trying to stare at your face and just see, see your reaction. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'm trying to keep a smile. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just going to move these into that Twitter resources space really quickly. 
Uh, and I just wanted, wanted to show you me actually doing this, just so you can see how easy it is to start organizing your stuff. And hopefully me showing you will just, yeah, will make, make it make more sense rather than me just explaining it. So yeah, I'm just gonna move these Twitter resources in there, into that space. And finally, I'm gonna move this final collection which is Twitter resources, like so. So as you can see very, very quickly, I've just really, really quickly organized my, my profile. So it's a lot more, makes a lot more sense to me. So now I have all my Wakelet collections under my profile, which is where I spend most of my time. I can now go to my personal uh, space and see all of the personal collections that I've made, uh, organized again, sorry for the delay in, in loading. Uh, and you can see all my personal collections in this space like so, so they've moved straight across. Uh, and I can also see all of my Twitter resources um, in this other space, I'm not sure what's, what's happening there. Um, but yeah, so that's just a very, very quick and easy way to actually organize uh, the collections that you've already made. Uh, but once you've created these spaces, you can actually create new collections in here as well. So rather than having to make a collection every time in your profile and move that over, I can now directly go to my personal space and create a collection on something else, maybe that's, um, I don't know, artwork that you'd, you'd like to buy or uh, I'm not sure what personal collections you might make or some things that you might be interested in. Maybe things that you'd like to buy for your kids for Christmas or anything like that you can create in your personal space. Uh, and the great thing about spaces is it is automatically private. So this is private to me. So nobody else will be able to access this space. Uh, so as opposed to your public profile, your profile, you have uh, sort of all your collections in your home area. But then you also have a public facing profile that you can see the collections that you have made public. Uh, by default, all of the uh, sort of collections that you make, all of the profiles that you make uh, are by, uh, by default private. Uh, and the second side of spaces is also the collaborative side of it. So um, with, with spaces, one of the big reasons for, for doing spaces was an easier way to invite people to collaborate on a full area or a space. Uh, we've seen many people uh, send multiple invites. So you might have five different collections that you'd like somebody else to, uh, to collaborate on. But at the moment, you'd have to send five separate invites. So this is a very nice way to in send one invite to your whole space. And then anybody who can join them can actually collaborate on the collections that you have added in here. Uh, so I'm going to try something here. Hopefully this works. Uh, but I'm going to actually invite uh, James and Misbah to my personal space, maybe it's probably not the best result, uh, space to invite them to, maybe if I had a wakelet space, it might make a little bit more sense. Um, but uh, actually, I'm just gonna make a make wakelet space really quick. Let me just make a wakelet space. So, like so. So I'm gonna actually uh, invite Ms. and James to my wakelet space here. So all I need to do is hit uh, members and hit invite members. And then all I need to do is uh, send this invite link or this invite code to Ms. or James and they should be able to join automatically to this space as uh, contributors. So uh, what, I'm doing, what I'm doing right now, Colin, for everybody, uh, all the folks at home, is I've, I'm within my spaces, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna copy that link, uh, that code, sorry, that Callum's just shared, and I'm gonna enter uh, Callum's space right now. So if you could let me know when you've joined, that'd be great. Second. Hmm, I can't see it anymore, Cal. You're going to have to pull it up again. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> that should be in there, Callum. I've yeah. um, added, a, added a collection. Uh, so hopefully you'll, uh, you'll see me very soon. Okay. You got that and anybody, anybody, feel free. And anybody in the chat, if you just check, take a look at this code, feel free to, to try and join the space. All you'll need to do is hit this, and I'll show you actually. Um, just let me know when you've, when you've seen that, Ms. Buff. You got that? Yep, I've got that. So for those of you in the chat that want to maybe try and join my space, you yourself just need to hit the, the plus button uh, and then click code or join space and then type that code in that I've just on the screen. So if uh, James or Misby, if you have that code written down, could you maybe share that in the chat? Or actually I'll just do that real quick. Just share the link, Carl. Okay, yeah. So hopefully chat, where's the chat? Uh, bear with me a second, chat. So I'm just going to share that link in the chat. So feel free, anybody to, to join the space and maybe create your own collection in here. 
Uh, but hopefully, let me refresh this. Hopefully, James said he's made a collection in this space, so hopefully that will appear now. I think everybody's clicked at it on the same time. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit slow. Please be patient, folks. When, when there's like, we've got over almost 700 people on the, uh, on the webinar right now. So just let it load in the background and just keep clicking refresh because when there's 700 people trying to click on a, a, a link, it, it does take quite some time. Um, but whilst that's loading, uh, Cal, should we move on? Yeah, it's, it's here. It's here anyway. So just to, show, just to show how that works, James has joined my space uh, and he's actually created his own collection in this space. So that you can, as, as you can imagine, this is really, really uh, interesting when doing uh, class projects, which Misba will sort of run through a few examples a little bit later on. Uh, but very interesting for students now can actually create their own collections within your space. Obviously, previously, if they didn't have Wakelet accounts, they could only uh, contribute to a collection you've made. But now they can actually contribute their own collection to your space. So it just takes sort of collaboration to a new level. Uh, and the great thing as well is if I have lots of different collections in here, I can actually collaborate with James on the collections that he's made as well. Um, like so. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, so James has created this, this collection and I'm doing this now. And I can actually go in here and collaborate with him on this collection that he's created. Um, any questions so far, Ms. Bro or James, that you can, that I can answer? What do you think, James? Do you wanna, do you wanna field some questions and then we'll try and answer them? Yeah, I mean, there's so many questions coming through. So thank you everyone for, uh, for getting your questions, get questions to me in the Q&A box. Um, Starting off with, I'll start with Misbah. This is one of the, the questions Misbah likes to answer. Uh, is there a limit to how many spaces I can create or how many collections I can create in my space or even people I invite to my space? Um, that's a, a really good question. And um, the answer tends to, to really please people when they find out. But yes, uh, it's completely unlimited. You can create as many spaces as you want. You can invite as many people as you want. You can create as many collections as you want. You can collaborate with as many people as you want. It's completely unlimited and it's completely free to use as well. Absolutely no limits whatsoever on that. I mean, and that very quickly, <laughs> for those, very, very quickly, for those of you in the, in the chat who are trying to access the code, uh, access the space, if it isn't working, it's probably because we are, we are a very passionate and over eager team and we expected everything to work when we, pay, when, we, when we pasted the code in. We expected 700 people to be able to successfully click on the link and then do it without the website crashing, right? So in most circumstances, if you're sharing a code with your class, um, it's not gonna be 700 kids, unless you're teaching a very, very big class. But in any case, it works completely fine. Uh, please just be patient, let it load in the background and enjoy the session uh, as we continue. Yeah, amazing. Cheers, Ms. Burr. Um, a few more questions, Callum. Uh, probably the best one for you, unless you want to pass it to Ms. Burr. Um, what is the di main difference between a public profile and a space? Like, why would you use a space instead of a public profile and vice versa? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. And I would say spaces and your sort of public profile are quite similar, really. Uh, a space is uh, pretty much the same as a public profile but you can invite other people to actually contribute with you on that profile. Uh, so as you can see here, when I go to my profile, it's very, very similar how it looks. And the only thing here is that I have the option to make my profile visible. So by default, this is private, but I can actually make, turn this into a public profile if I wanted to. So if I change this to a public profile, it will basically work exactly the same as your original profile, but you can invite people to that space to collaborate on all the collections in there. Uh, so I, I guess it's very, very similar, but the addition uh, with, with a Wakelet space is that you can invite others to that space, that whole profile, and they can collaborate in that area. Amazing, thank you, Callum. And then uh, just one last one then, this is a kind of a little teaser for people who are using spaces and, and want a bit more. Um, I know, well, we know that this is not the, the final version of spaces, right? This, there's so much more to come, can you? Uh, yeah tease a few things out there? Yeah, so that's a great question. That's probably, that's probably something that I, would, uh, I was gonna talk about towards the end of the session before we run through, but I guess we can, we can talk about that now. Uh, yeah, there's lots and lots more to come with, with Spaces. This is the ver very, very first version. Uh, and I will talk about some of the settings that we have on Spaces and, and so, some of the things that you can do. Uh, and I, I guess a lot of the things that I show people say, oh, but it'd be great if you could do this. 
and it'd be great if you could do this. I'm not sure what's happened. I've just been logged out. <laughs> um, but it'd be great if you could do uh, X, Y, and Z. And yeah, we're, we're recording all of the feedback. We're looking at that. Uh, and we have s certain things such as moderation, uh, commenting, um, additional organization structures, including potentially adding folders in spaces. Um, better the organization. Well. Sorry? The apps as well. Yeah, the apps as well. So many of you might be asking in the chat as well, when will Spaces come to the apps? Uh, yeah, so at the moment, Spaces is only available on the desktop. Uh, we are working uh, very hard and tirelessly at the moment to make it available on the apps. Uh, so our uh, app teams are both uh, are working on that as we speak. Uh, so hopefully that will be available pretty soon. Um, any, any other questions, guys? Um, Honestly, I'm looking, I'm, sorry, I'm, looking, I'm taking a look at them. We've got like... <laughs> like 46 open questions. <clears throat> so we've got plenty of questions, which is really good. Just to be realistic, guys, within, within the timeline that we have, it's probably unlikely that we'll be able to answer every single question. Um, however, we will dedicate some time at the end when the webinar finishes, where we will go through the questions, all three of us, and we will try and answer as many as possible. Um, but I think that just to, just to kind of build on what Callum was saying, think of a space as a private or public area, separate from your profile, that you can create any, anything that you want on any topic that you want and then invite people into it. So a little bit further on in the webinar, I'm gonna be sharing some cool ideas with you on how, that, how you can actually do that. But I think that Callum, you're gonna talk about um, how you can invite actual students to a space, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. so, so one, of the, one of the amazing things that, uh, that the team has done uh, for Wakelet Spaces is actually allow the capability for students to sign into a space with uh, uh, Microsoft or Google credentials where they don't actually sign up for an account or they sign into a space. So uh, maybe like, like many other platforms that you, you may use, such as Flipgrid or uh, other, other platforms that, that people use, uh, it works in a similar way uh, to a lot of different platforms where students can sign in through their, their Microsoft or Google credentials directly into a space without actually generating an account. And the great thing about that is, is that they can actually reaccess that space at any time. Um, previously, on collabor when, when collaborating on Wakelet, uh, a lot of the time we saw students uh, joining uh, collections or creating their own collections. Uh, and the, the only thing that was negative about that was that if a student creates a, joins a collection as a contributor, as a signed out user, and then leaves that collection, there's no way for them to go back in and edit the things that they've previously done. Uh, so this really, really does solve that problem where a student could maybe start doing a piece of work on uh, today, for instance, in a space, and then tomorrow they can come back and, and start where, pick up where they left off by signing back, click back into that, that space. Um, some other I, things, sorry, go on, Ms. Burr. Sorry, Cal, yeah, I just think that um, to make that distinction as well, once again, so there's, there's now, there used to be only one way to collaborate on Wakelet, right? And that would be through a collection, like Callum's just said. This makes it so that the collection is also collaborative, but you've now got a whole space. So instead of students just adding particular items to a collection, like adding a YouTube video or a note, they can actually create an entire collection from scratch. Um, so it's, it's really, really big. <laughs> yeah, and, and just before I go through how you can invite students and how that, that works and how it, how it looks for them, I was gonna really, really quickly cover some of the, the settings uh, that people, like some of the permission settings and what people can actually can and can't do within a space. Um, so by default, anybody that joins a space uh, can view all of the collections in here uh, and they can add items to any of the collections. Uh, and like we said, this is just the beginning of spaces. There will be more settings further down the line. Uh, but at the moment, if, if somebody is invited to a space, they can access all of the collections in a space. So as you can see, I've, Anna here has created this a video in English collection. I can go in here and add uh, items to this space if I wanted to and see what she's done. Um, but all the other people that join the, well, it looks like there's lots of collections being created here, 13 collections, 50 members. <laughs> well, anyway, so as you, when you join a space, you automatically join as a contributor. Uh, and this basically means that you can create your own collection and you can contribute to other collections. By contribute, I mean, you can go into other collections and add items, but you can't delete any of the collections. You can't delete any of the items that have been previously added to that collection. Um, and I'm sure there's probably a lot of questions around that in the chat, so hopefully that's answered them. 
And if there is more questions about that, we'd be more than happy to answer that again, just to cover that again. Uh, but if you go into the um, members area, so let me just go into the members area here, I'll be able to see all the people that have joined this space here. Uh, and as you can see, I have the little crown, which means I'm the owner. And on the little pen uh, button, this means that th that person is a contributor. Um, if I would like somebody to, in my space, to be able to actually edit some of the other collections that I've created or other people have created, maybe I have a, a supply teacher or maybe I have a space with my colleagues. So if I was creating a space with James and Misba and I wanted them to be able to edit some of my Wakelet collections, I could actually change them to a, an administrator. So if I just go on, let me just show you again. If I just hover over here and hit the, the three dots, hit permissions, change that to an administrator. Now, Inez or Inz, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, is now an administrator. So she will be able to now go into my collections and sort of customize them and edit anything that I've done, maybe make edits and so on. Uh, you can also remove people from your um, space as well. So let me find, I actually want to let me kick James out of this. I feel like I, I feel like I want to kick James out of this space today. Cheers, Al. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. <laughs> if I can find his name. Uh, oh, then actually I'll kick Misbra out. Hey. That's more <laughs> like it. That's more like it. <laughs> there we go. I've removed Misbra now so that he can no longer access this space. Uh, so hopefully that's answered a few questions that might have been popping up in the chat. Um, are there any other questions around sort of that sort of style of question? Yeah, I, th I think, Cal, that like, it's a very safe space, right? So we've, we've, when we've created, created spaces, we spend many months speaking with educators just like you to kind of discover the things which you're concerned about, the issues that you're concerned about, things like safety, things like accountability. And so we've made sure to factor all of those things in. Um, like Callum said, uh, unless you're an admin, you can't delete anything in the collection. Uh, in the space. You can't delete collections, you can't uh, delete other people's collections. Um, uh, if you are an admin, then, then you do have the ability to do that. So let's just say, for example, um, you and uh, a sub-teacher or you and uh, another teacher are creating a collaborative space between your, your classes. Well, uh, you and the sub-teacher would be admins because you can then go ahead and delete things or, or move things around. And um, the students will just be able to join the space and create their own collections and contribute to collections as well. So I think that it's important to remember that there are two different sides to spaces, right? There is an organizational side, which means that you have complete organization now in making your profile as, uh, as organized as possible by creating different spaces like Cal showed you. But then on top of that, there's this whole new world of collaboration that opens up. And what you'll find, if those of you know about Wakelet anyway, if you've already used it, it's a very, very simple, simple concept and a very, very simple tool. But the beautiful thing is, its simplicity leads to so many amazing, sophisticated ideas. And we really don't want to limit you. you know? uh, over the next coming weeks, we'll be inspiring you with loads of different ideas of how teachers are using it. But just in the chat today, we've already seen some great ideas. Um, Dorota says uh, that she's created um, uh, uh, spaces with language teachers in, in a school, so different groups of different language teachers where they can exchange resources and share. We've had other people talking about uh, creating uh, different spaces for each one of their classes so that they can have a nice collaborative environment where their students can come and, and uh, uh, join and, and share all of their ideas and their thoughts in one place. So it's very simple really, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, it's very, very simple. And I'm, I'm gonna try and show you how simple it would be for, for a student to join this space as well, just so you can see. Uh, so here, like I said, said I showed you before, I'm gonna show you how to invite people. So I'm just gonna click copy this, this uh, link again. And I'm just gonna go into an incognito window just so you can see uh, me as a signed out user. If I shared this uh, space link with a student, they would go to this link like so as it, as it comes up. Bear with me a second. Uh, and then it will ask uh, the person who's joining this, are they a student? And like we said, we are improving this as we go along. We are gonna make it a little bit more clearer uh, to join as a student and join as a, as a, as a normal user. Uh, but if I click here, join as a student, I'll now just be asked to sign in with uh, Google or Microsoft. Uh, and like, like I said, it, it works pretty much like any other platform where you're just getting your students to sign in to the space with their email address. Uh, but the great thing that we've done here is that we don't store any data. The students don't create accounts. There's no account, there's no public, like if you share that, uh, that um, them collections publicly, there's no account, there's no sort of 
identifiers where you can see who the students are. So it's completely private. The students' privacy is all, all sort of in, in check. So there's no, no problems about that. Uh, and it sort of opens up where students of all ages can now sign into a Wakelet space and create their own collections for the first time ever. Whereas before it was you, students of any age could only maybe join and contribute uh, to a collection. So now they can actually create their own uh, and contribute. Uh, any, any, anything to add to that, Ms. Bro James? No, I, I think I think that that's 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 perfect, perfectly right. Yeah, and I think it's also important to note everybody that at Wakelet we're we're very very much in tune with what you as an educator community expect and want from our platform. So, um, you know, this is the first version of Spaces, right? This is the very first version of Spaces. Doing webinars like this and gathering all of your feedback online, and and uh, you know, we're very accessible. You can tweet us and messages. Um, as soon as we release spaces, immediately we're constantly gathering feedback to improve it. I mean, there are very, there are very few features which when first released take into account every single use case and every single scenario. So with this being the very first um, uh, version of spaces, we know and we're completely aware that there are definitely improvements that can be made. There are additional features which can be added and we really rely on your feedback in order to do that. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of the uh, suggestions and the comments which have come in today have been amazing ideas. Uh, after this webinar, we're gonna be recording every single one of them uh, and then we're just gonna pass them over to Cal because he's gonna be able to, to actually transfer them uh, into development and get them actually on the platform ready to rock. Um, but for the time being, in its most basic form, um, Spaces works right out of the box. And uh, we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to collaborate with your students, with other people in your, um, in your network and in your learning community. Yeah, uh, and, and just to echo what Ms. said, uh, I'm, I'm sort of given the responsibility of trying to sift through all that feedback, understand uh, what the pain points are, what what things we could do to improve and make the experience better. So uh, like we said, we're very open. Uh, I will leave my details in the, the chat just before we leave this uh, at the end. And uh, then you can feel free to give any feedback or any ideas that you have. Um, there's also a level of, sorry Cal, there's also a level of accountability as well, right everybody? So with students using single sign-on, um, you know, you're gonna be able to actually see anything that a student has submitted um, and then in the future, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for Cal. I know that he's got some awesome uh, features. Cal, why don't you talk about some of the features which are coming and then we'll jump into examples. <laughs> well, I think, I think um, space in itself is, is taking a step towards um, something quite exciting where you'll have, student, uh, you, you'll, you have student accounts and they have their own portfolios and their own areas. And then you have spaces that they're invited to on different projects, different topics by their teachers and maybe even have spaces where you collaborate with other students on projects as well. So it's quite, it's quite, it's quite a big project that we're, we're undertaking here and I think it's quite a big one. Uh, but the, that's probably a little bit further down the line. Um, but the immediate future is we're, adding, we're gonna be adding uh, commenting in here. We're gonna be adding uh, the ability to potentially chat around the collections that you're creating. Um, there's this million, there's a million, there's a million things. It's quite hard to, to sum up uh, just off the top of my head. Um, we've got yeah we've got we've got a lot in the we've got a lot of features in the pipeline because we know that educators want um want a lot from spaces because it opens up so many amazing doors for them when it comes to creating these really memorable learning experiences for their yeah. students and obviously um right now especially with remote learning collaboration is so important right and there are a lot of collaboration tools out there that require a lot of um jumping through hoops in order to just get things done and um, as far as we know we've made spaces just as simple as possible. So it doesn't matter what project your students are involved in, it doesn't matter what the task is, uh, they're all gonna be able to comfortably join a space and then work collaboratively within that space. Yeah, I think, I think one of the main things that we'll probably, we'll probably work on in, in the near future will be more so around, so you have this private space, but not all of the collections in here you'll want to view. So I'm inviting all my students in here and I might have a few units or a few collections that uh, I want my students to view at some point, but not right now. Um, so we'll, we'll bring in more features where you can sort of hide certain collections and only uh, allow certain people to see certain collections and only allow certain people to make edits to certain collections and so on. Uh, but that, that's sort of a, a big project that's, that's, that's going to be uh, sort of next, really, in, in spaces. Um, what I really loved as well, Carol, was this idea that um, 
a space can be private or it can be public, right? So I know that, yeah, I know that some of you may be a little bit confused as to, I had a question that came in that was a really interesting one, where a teacher was asking if they want to create a place where their, um, their students can just discover resources, like a go-to, a home area where they can find all the resources in, uh, that they need for their class. Um, do they create a profile or do they create a space, right? So I think the way to look at it is this. You have your, your personal profile on Wakelet and you can use that any way that you like. And I know that a lot of educators have already built up these really beautiful profiles uh, that their teachers go to in order to view content. I think that a space is a little bit more nuanced than that. There's a little bit more, um, uh, how can I say this? It's a little bit more special, right? So I would keep spaces quite specific. So let's say for example, you've, let's say I'm an educator. I, and I've created my own Wakelet profile that I've had for years. And in this profile, there's all of this amazing information for my students. Great. Keep it how it is. Now let's say that I want to create a project on climate change or a very specific thing where I want to do e-twinning or I want to um, create a collaborative uh, plan or an activity with my class. In that case, I'd create a space within my account. The whole idea of spaces is to give you the flexibility to have an endless amount of spaces or profiles uh, just under one email address and under one account. So um, I think that if you're ever thinking to yourself, do I need a space for this? I think it's best to think of, well, does, does what I'm doing deserve a space? Uh, and if it doesn't, then just create a collection and then have your students collaborate on that collection uh, from your profile. So spaces and profile, kind of interchangeable, but you have one account, one profile, endless spaces. Yeah, and just to touch on what you're, you're saying there and, and what that teacher has, has asked there. So you can invite people to a space when you want them to do collaborative projects, when you're wanting them to make their own collections and maybe contribute to some of the collections that you've made. Uh, but like, like we said before, you can actually make a, a profile public. So I'm gonna make this public now, hit save. And then any of these collections that are public, so I'm just gonna make one or two public really quickly. Um, so let me just make these two public. So now I've made those collections public. These collections that have been made public are now on my public profile, like so. So maybe if you want to create a space on climate change with all the resources that you want your students to view but not actually contribute to, you probably just make a space with all the collections public and a public profile and just share that space into classrooms or Teams or your LMS platform, whatever you use. And then your students can go to this space called climate change with all the resources that they have and can access them at any point and maybe you have uh, another channel with um, math resources and do the same there i think it totally depends on on what you're what you're wanting to, to achieve uh, but that might be another it might be better to share a profile link for them to view rather than invite them to join if that makes sense yeah i, I think you're right carl i think that like a space can essentially become like a profile. Like, like Cal showed you just then, we just had a question come in from an educator saying, um, you know, how do I change the app name of, of, my, uh, of my, my space? Well, you're only ever gonna really need an app name when you've created a space, the project is done, and you feel like, okay, this project is ready, I wanna share this with the world right now. When you do that, and you're ready for that, just click on the change permissions button, make it public, and then you'll have a profile, just like a Wakelet profile. You can then change the, the handle of that and it will behave just like a Wakelet profile. So um, it gives you that freedom really to, to create as many, as many profiles as you like, for sure. Yeah, so I've just shown on my screen now, I'll just really, really, really quickly recap what Miss was saying there. So I'm just gonna make this private again, just to, show, just to run through it again. So this is private and I'm happy now to share this with my students just to view it. Uh, so I just make this public, like so. And this might be even in a setting where you have created a space with your colleagues or friend or your teaching colleagues or maybe people from around the world and you've created a bank of resources that you would like to share uh, publicly to your, other, your, your network or to your teachers. Uh, and you might not want them to join the space to actually contribute, so you might want them just to view it. So you make that profile public, you go to your, your profile. So this is now public, it's assigned me an app name, but I can just hit edit profile uh, change my, my description if I want to and change my, my app name if I wanted to as well, add a bio, similar to your, your profile, add an image, a background image and all those sorts of things and make it look nice. And then you can also add sections onto your space as well. So that might also work when you have 
a class resources space and you have a math section, uh, a geography section, a history section and so on. And Cal, I think just on that as well, we know that as an educator, you probably wear many different hats, right? You may have a, a teacher profile, and that profile is where you, your students come to view content, but you may want to create a portfolio on Wakelet. So create a space for it. It's, 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 it's yours. You own it. Nobody can get to it except you. And it's very accessible because you've created a space that acts just like a profile. Um, you can create collections on the amazing things that you're doing uh, and then just share that as a, as a portfolio uh, if you're looking for, for work or if you're looking to attend an event or whatever it might be. So literally, it, it is a space for absolutely anything, anything at all. Um. Any questions, James? Uh, I think I've covered everything that I, I wanted to cover there. Um, I, wouldn't bo I wouldn't bother James. James has 71 questions now. <laughs> yeah, I am absolutely, my, my fingers are hurting at the minute. And <laughs> actually so many questions. Um, I think the main thing people are asking now is for a bit of inspiration. There's a lot of ideas floating around the chat. Yes. Um, and I think it's now time for Misba to, to share some amazing ideas with people. Yeah, I'll pass, I'll pass, uh, pass the baton over to Misba then to take it Pass away. the torch, yeah. Um, yeah, well, like I said, um, when we when we came up with the idea of spaces, it was influenced and inspired by, uh, by by so many different educators that we spoke to. And I think the great thing about a webinar like this is that you're part of this journey, right? We're not the kind of uh, company to just kind of create a, a, um, a, a feature and then just be like, there, use it. Uh, everything that we create is directly inspired by, by your feedback. And I think that even this webinar is part of that process because as a team, I mean, we're the ones who are building it, right? So as a team, we get to see all of the questions that you're asking. We get to see if you're running into any issues or problems. So um, just to reiterate, this is version one. Um, there's going to be so many more incredible improvements and enhancements as we go along. And if there's one thing that I would take away from this webinar, it's instead of just looking at Wakelet as an organizational presentation tool, from today, you should start looking at it as a really powerful collaboration tool as well, because that's what Spaces enables. So in the release of Spaces, we uh, had some amazing tweets, some really inspiring feedback and examples and ideas from the community. So I'm gonna just share my screen right now. And obviously this is still early days. So Spaces was only released last week and we know if we know the educator community as well as we do, we know that there are going to be some phenomenal ideas that are going to be shared in the next, uh, the next coming weeks, and perhaps even from everybody here as well. What I'd like everybody to do in the chat is, now that you know what Spaces does, I would like you, before I jump into showing you some inspiration and some, some ideas, let us know what you'll be creating your first space on. And we'd like to see all of your ideas. And whilst you're doing that, I'm gonna show you a few tweets which we got through. So as you can see, like I mentioned before, Spaces is split as a feature. There's organizational benefits and there's collaborative benefits. So in terms of organizational benefits, we have an educator here who says that the only issue that they had with Wakelet was the fact that they had so many different collections like Cal showed, but no real way to organize them. So this educator here has created loads of different spaces and organized their collections into those spaces, just about their home area, now, coming up, we're going to be adding a copy feature, but for the time being, it will be move only. So when you move those collections into the spaces, they will be removed from your profile, from your account, just so that you know. But for many, many educators all over the place, it's a great way of just adding that extra layer of organization into their Wakelet account. Uh, once again, creating spaces for teaching resources, right? Now, I absolutely love this idea. As an educator, you're constantly sharing resources with so many different people. And quite often, you don't want to share your profile because your profile only contains the content that you've made public. And you could be using your profile for something completely different. You could be using your profile as a way of sharing newsletters. Uh, lots of people are using their profiles in different ways. Now, Spaces allows you to create a, a section in an area about a very particular thing. And not only that, but also invite people over to add their own resources and their own content to it as well. So big shout out to Olivia there for that awesome idea. Now, Letitia also, Letitia Citizen, um, said that there are, there are no sufficient amount of words to explain uh, just how full my organized love is at the moment. Uh, Wakelet Spaces has this OCD person dancing uh, now Letitia can rest easy because she had 120 different collections now nicely organized into spaces. Uh, she even used emojis for the images just so she can keep track of where everything is. This uh, screen which you're seeing right here 
it, when you go to your spaces area here, after you've done like maybe five or six different spaces, there'll be a little pop-up button that when you click, it will display the, sp the spaces in a pop-up. So you can see them all on one page. Going back, um, we've got Chris, who again, organizing my training into spaces. So let's say, for example, you've got a collection, right? Uh, let's say, for example, you've got a home area. And in that home area, you've got a load of collections on assignments, lesson plans, or whatever. But then you have 10 collections that are on a very particular specific thing, like training or PD. Create a space for it, right? You can do that now. Create a space, call it PD, and then just move the collections across. It's really, really therapeutic as well. I love it. It's kind of like spring cleaning. Again, Selena with the same issue, uh, had loads of collections in her home area. Now she's creating spaces uh, to put all of those things in. And Anna says that finally peace and order in my collections. Now, moving on to the more collaborative side of it, um, this particular school is using Wakelet spaces with senior pupils. So collaborating with senior pupils on a very particular subject. And this one, reason for growth of information uh, and digital passports. So what Celine has been able to do is create a Wakelet space on this very, very specific uh, uh, project, digital passport, and then click invite members, and then invite all of her students into the space. As you can see here, she's blurred the names out. She's been able to add students into the space, 11 members who are all contributing collections into this area right now. Imagine how cool this is for you as an educator to give your students that freedom to allow them to express themselves and empower them to create collections within a very, very particular space, a safe space as well. Really, really cool idea there. Um, Moving on, Maria, one of our favorite Wakelet ambassadors, uh, using Wakelet with, uh, using spaces with students to reinforce practice. Again, you can see here on this screenshot um, that she's created a Wakelet space on a particular subject. She's invited everybody here and uh, she's able to actually enjoy that awesome collaborative space uh, with the other members in her learning community. So there's a whole bunch of other ideas and I'm gonna share this collection with you all at the end as well. But lastly, I wanted to go through a very short blog post. Well, it's not short, it's actually 12, but I'm just going to choose my favorite ones. So I don't know if any of you know about the Merrills. They're an amazing couple uh, on uh, Twitter, and they create some really, really awesome content. They're Wakelet ambassadors. They create some great tech content, not just about Wakelet, by the way. They do some great blogs and videos on loads of other uh, tech platforms. They've created this latest blog, which is 12 ways, 12 ideas that they have on how to use Wakelet Spaces. This is a really awesome article. It helps, sum up, it helps sum up spaces in a way that we could never do because we're not educators. So this is from the mouths of educators. It tells you how to create a space here. And don't worry, like I said, I will be sharing this collection with everybody afterwards. And then there's these 12 awesome ways to use spaces, right? So planning with your team. Create a space for each subject where you and your colleagues can add content to be used when teaching or planning lessons. This is really cool because collaboration is not just for uh, teach, uh, students, it's also for you and your learning communities. I'm sure many of you have colleagues that you're constantly sending lots of different material back and forth, either through Twitter or email or whatever. Do you know what? Forget all of that. Make a space, invite them, and then boom, all of that content gets shared all in one place, and you can constantly update it, constantly find out what's happening. Group projects are another big one. Now, we found that during the remote learning period, a lot of educators were turning to group projects because they're more collaborative in nature and they make for some really cool learning experiences for students. Why don't you create a space on a particular group project, invite the students of the group into that space, and then that's their environment where they can contribute to it. The best part is, it's all there for you to mark. It's all there for you to, to, to kind of see and, and, and give feedback on which is awesome. Student portfolios, create a space for each student, allow them to add content, and the list just goes on and on and on. Like I said, I'm gonna be sharing this collection uh, of this content with everybody in the chat, but should we go up and see how many awesome ideas that we have from people in the chat? By the way, everybody, this chat is so active. Sorry, go on, go on, James. I'm, I'm trying to carry, uh, look through the chat and the questions. There's too many to keep up with. There's so many ideas. It's too many. I just decided. I said that before I actually looked at the chat. Um, everybody, you're breaking my computer right now. Uh, there's, there's so many amazing ideas that are coming through. But you know what? I'll tell you what we'll do, right? 
What we like to do on webinars like this is we will copy the chat and we will add it to a collection that we will then send to everybody who's registered. That way, all of those amazing ideas, they're not going to be lost. Um, and I think we wanted this to just be half an hour, but it's now 55 minutes, so we're coming to the end of it. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's taken the time out. You are part of this journey. Everybody who is in this chat right now, you are part of this journey. We don't just put these webinars on to kind of sell you something. We put them on so that we can gather feedback and understand, are you enjoying the platform? Do you get spaces? Do you understand it? What do you want to see? What do you like? What do you don't like? All of this allows us to create the best platform possible. And we're, we're doing that because of you. We're doing that because of the community. So we really, 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 really appreciate it. James, I know that, by the way, those of you who don't know James, all of the amazing things that happen for the community, that's James's job. James looks after the community. James, why don't you say a few words? That is very true. I was just getting the landing page ready as we were speaking. <laughs> um, just to follow on with what Ms. Ba said, um, everything that Callum's shown you through, all the ideas that Ms. Ba's shared with you there, um, they are not our ideas. We wish we, we could say they were, um, but, but they're simply not. And, and as Callum mentioned before, we'll always continue to improve and make enhancements to, to spaces and obviously the other features on Wakelet as well. Um, and yeah, please join us on that journey. But this is just the start. This is version one of Spaces. We will continue to make it even better and better. Um, so please, we do invite you to join the Wakelet community. Um, so head over to community.wakelet.com. Callum, Misba, if you could share the link in the chat, that'd be great. Um, and yeah, just be a part of this amazing journey. Being on this, these webinars is amazing. Uh, you can see how global it is. Uh, how global our, our community is so please join help us make uh, the best platform possible let's help let's help us make spaces out of this world uh, and then join amazing community members as well people who are like-minded and passionate just like yourself and as part of that you can even get your hands on some wake up goodies as well um, i know there's not too much time left but yeah i always wanted to try and squeeze in the community because honestly uh, the community does mean a lot to us and it helps us and it helps you uh, create the best platform possible and you also happen to be some of the most interesting, passionate, and crazy people on earth. So <laughs> we, are true, yeah. so, we are so, so thankful. Honestly, thank you to everybody in this amazing community for making our lives so rich and so meaningful and keeping us inspired every single day. Because without your feedback, we simply couldn't do it. We really, really appreciate you. Cal, let's end with the incredible callum everybody i want everyone to give a digital round of applause to callum because callum is the man who brought spaces to this platform cal any final words i was actually thinking of, of something that we could could do whilst everybody's here should we do a little competition where we get everybody to tweet us their ideas of how they're going to be using spaces next and we'll give some teachers yes 100 percent. Yeah. let's do it let's do it yeah <laughs> that sounds good that sounds good Cal, why don't, you t why don't you tell everybody what to do in order to win okay, some awesome okay. Wakelet goodies? So straight after this webinar, if everybody could go ahead straight to Twitter, Facebook, whatever platform you use, uh, share an idea of how you're going to be using uh, Spaces Next in the classroom with your colleagues or friends with hashtag Wakelet Spaces. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, um, James will pick out somebody or we'll pick out somebody uh, to give away some t-shirts to. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's Sounds like a, like a fair deal, yeah. yeah. That sounds pretty good, I think. Yeah. We didn't plan this, by the way, everybody. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, there's now a, a, a competition out there for everybody to, to, to join in. So as Callum said, just to confirm it, share the ideas that you have on how you're going to be using spaces in, your, in the new school year. Hashtag Wakelet Spaces. That's all you have to do, and we'll be announcing the winner. What should we say? Should we give it a day, two days? What do you think, a day? Yeah, let's this is only available one. to everyone on this webinar. So let's do... Uh, this evening going into tonight and then we'll announce them tomorrow yeah that's what that's what i'm talking about okay everybody i think that it's time to go we really really appreciate it everyone will get a certificate everybody will get a collection with all the awesome items and, and resources that we shared and uh yeah we really really appreciate everybody in the chat thank you all so much uh I, uh, something caught my eye right there i think i think somebody's talking about you james somebody said oh. that you're handsome <laughs> my adriana, are learning. adriana says you're handsome I, I really, yeah, I, have you, I have to agree with that. I have to agree with it. All my ears were burning a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you everybody for your time. We are going to close our mics and, and, and mute our cameras or the other way around. I will leave the chat open for just a few more moments um, just in case you've missed anything. But yeah, that's it from us. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.